everybody. Morgan here. So we're going to be finishing off the thermo outline for Honors Chem today. And we're not going to be doing anything mathematical, no numbers involved, just positive and negative signs. So we have a reaction here that is spontaneous. Right away that tells me that delta G is negative. I know delta G is negative for spontaneous reactions. Now, how about delta S? Well, I've got two moles turning into one mole. I've got gas turning into solid. That sounds an awful lot like delta S being a negative number. Okay. Now, this gets interesting because I need something to drive this reaction, something that makes it spontaneous. And delta S negative does not tend towards spontaneity, which means in this case it has to have a negative delta H for the reaction to be spontaneous. And that would be what we call the driving force. Now, our next example, water liquid going to water gas. That's boiling, isn't it? And we're talking about 298 Kelvin, which is room temperature. Does water spontaneously boil at room temperature? No. Delta G is positive. Now, delta S, well, liquid to gas is most definitely a positive delta S. Okay, the molecules are much more spread out. Okay. And now, I'm going to phrase the question strangely, but how do you boil water? <laughs> you heat it, don't you? That's endothermic. That means delta H is positive. Heat going in. Okay. Another phase change here. This is dry ice subliming. And we know that dry ice does sublime at room temperature, so that's spontaneous. Delta G is a negative. When going from a solid to a gas, we have a massive increase in entropy. Delta S is positive. And how do we cause something to sublime? We put heat into it. So now, here, Delta S negative was a driving force. That wasn't. Delta S positive, driving force. That was, did I say negative there? I meant to say positive. Delta S positive is the driving force. Delta S positive is the driving force. Those are not driving forces for us. Okay? Now, 271 Kelvin is a temperature beneath the freezing point of water. Does ice spontaneously melt beneath the freezing point of water? No. So delta G must be positive. We know delta S is positive because a solid goes to a liquid. That's more disorder. And we also know that to cause ice to melt, we have to heat it. So that's a positive delta S. Or I'm sorry, positive delta H. OK, so there you go. We're going to do a pretty major homework assignment based on this. And it's going to require you to actually use some common sense in knowing how the things like phase changes happen. Okay, thanks for tuning in. This is Morgan, signing off.